In our last video, we discussed a very important concept that DNA is always synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And in this video, we're going to discuss a little bit more in detail what exactly happens during replication. So replication in general happens in a very specific site, and that site is known as the origin of replication. And the origin of replication is a sequence of nucleotides that DNA polymerase recognizes that, oh, this is where I'm supposed to start replicating DNA. And let's label our DNA so that it's very clear what is where. So let's say the top is, you know, 5 prime is there, 73 prime is here on the right. And DNA is anti-parallel. It runs in opposite directions. So the bottom will have the opposite direction with 5 prime on the right and 3 prime on the left. And what DNA polymerase is going to do is, and we'll start with the bottom strand, DNA polymerase is going to lay down an RNA primer. And the RNA primer is a piece of nucleic acid that allows the DNA polymerase to hook more, nu more nucleotides onto it. So it's going to put that RNA primer on and then add nucleotides to it in this direction. And then on top, it's going to add an RNA primer right here and then add nucleotides to that primer in that direction. So let's label, let's label the directions of our strand that's being synthesized. And remember, we know that it happens in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction. So it must be going from 5 prime to 3 prime. And on bottom, the opposite. It must be going from 5 prime here to 3 prime on the right. And now you can see that even though DNA synthesis happens in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction, the parental strand is actually being read in the opposite direction because DNA strands are always anti-parallel to each other. So while DNA is synthesized in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction, it is read in the opposite direction from 3 prime to 5 prime. And hopefully this will become more clear as we go along. Let's take an even closer look at what's going on. And this is just this origin of replication. We just, you know, cut it in half right down here. And we're going to look at one side. So this is a replication fork named for its shape. And again, let's label everything. This is 5 prime, which makes that 5 prime. And here are our 3 prime sides. So again, DNA polymerase lays down the primer, which it, whose purpose is to act as a place where it can hook new nucleotides onto, and proceeds to add nucleotides in this direction. And again, it lays a primer over here and proceeds to add nucleotides in the opposite direction. And again, let's label our strand that's being synthesized, 5 prime over here, 5 prime over here, 3 prime over here and 3 prime over here. So by looking at this, we can kind of see that in the bottom strand right here, DNA polymerase can work in a continuous fashion because as the fork opens up, it can just keep adding another nucleotide and another nucleotide and another nucleotide. But let's look at the top strand. What's going on over here? So DNA polymerase is adding nucleotides, but once, once it hits this spot here and adds its last nucleotide, kind of stuck and has to just sit there and wait until the fork opens up with enough room for it to put an additional RNA primer and do whatever it has to do. So let's see what happens a few seconds later as our fork opens up. Again, let's label everything. So in our bottom strand, synthesis was quite continuous and just easy to do. But in our top strand, we had an RNA primer that was added in the beginning, and then DNA polymerase kind of had to stop. And then when the fork opened, DNA polymerase put another primer over here and continued to add nucleotides. Let's move on. The fork opens up even more. And I think you're getting the point here. 
again in our bottom strand everything is just continuous we have one RNA primer but in our top strand so let me just label this five prime and here we have three prime and in our top strand we get a bunch of fragments RNA and some nucleotides and here's another piece of RNA and the nucleotides that were added and here's another piece of RNA and the nucleotides that were added and another piece of RNA so we have a bunch of these fragments and a bunch of these RNA primers and these fragments have a name these fragments are called Okazaki fragments they're named after the person who discovered them The strand where synthesis is continuous is known as the leading strand. And the strand where synthesis is not continuous is known as the lagging strand because it's kind of lagging behind. It always has to wait for the fork to open up with enough room to lay down a primer. And we're almost ready with our newly synthesized DNA. But before we get to our last step, there are two things that need to happen. The first is we have to get rid of uh, these RNA primers when we're done. So an enzyme known as RNase will come and replace all of the RNA primers with DNA. And then the next step that has to be done is that these Okazaki fragments have to be stitched together. And the enzyme that does that is DNA ligase. DNA ligase will come along and stitch together the Okazaki fragments so that we have a continuous piece of DNA. And then here's our, here's our new DNA. One strand is the parental strand, the original strand that was used as a template. And the other strand is the daughter strand. And as we mentioned in our last video, this is semi conservative replication because we are conserving part of our old DNA in our newly synthesized DNA pair.